Okay, what we're going to make tonight is a uh, homemade pizza. We're going to make two of them. We're going to make uh, one, it's called Chicken Savoy. It's uh, chicken, portobello mushrooms, sweet Vidalia onions, and red bell peppers sprinkled with a little balsamic vinegar. And over here we have the uh, vegetarian pizza. It's um, Roma tomatoes, green bell peppers, and red onions, and you can't see it, but spinach is um, sprinkled uh, throughout the, the pie. And we like to think they're as close to restaurant quality style that uh, we, we can get, and we'll show you how to do that. What we're gonna do tonight is uh, make uh, pizza dough. It's gonna be a two-step process to make the pizzas. What I like to do is, the day before, I like to make the dough and we make it from scratch. It's only a few ingredients. It's really easy to do. You could do this the same day, uh, make it in the morning, and then let it sit out, and by the evening, um, it, it'll be ready. But I kind of prefer to do it the day before, and I don't leave the dough out. I actually put it in the refrigerator, um, and I let it sit in there the whole time. The next night, I come to make the uh, pizza and the dough is just um, like uh, better to work with. It's uh, more manageable when it's been refrigerated. Now the ingredients we have, um, they're pretty basic. We're gonna have flour and yeast, salt, sugar, and olive oil. On the flour though, um, what I've done for years is I just use the regular all-purpose flour. You know, any kind uh, would be good. Pillsbury, gold medal, whatever you have. Um, however, in recent years I really found that um, the flour that they make better for bread uh, turns out a nicer dough. So I'm sold on this and this is all I use from now on when I make dough. I'm making two doughs tonight because I'm going to make two pies tomorrow. Um, but I didn't have enough flour so I purchased another one and they didn't have this one at Wegmans. So I'm going to use this one. It's still bread flour uh, but it will be a first. So these are the ingredients and we'll get started. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is get one cup of hot water. The water, it has to be between like 100 and 110 degrees. Um, if it's not hot enough, the yeast won't actually activate and the dough won't rise. If it's too hot, it kills the yeast and it doesn't rise. Oh, That's wow. why you have to get it in that span. But I'm not scientific or anything, so I never get out a thermometer. You just put your water on the, the you know, hot and then you go underneath and that was really hot so I'm going to turn it down a bit I think I have our set at 140 in the basement we like it hot so you get it to where it's just warm on your wrist the inside of your wrist and we put in the water now we have the yeast I use the dry yeast uh, this also comes in those little packets too and just uh, read the directions on how much yeast you want to put in for this one cup, I'm going to put in three tablespoons. I'm making one dough. Now. Oh, wow. Not the both together, huh? Now I'll repeat this process oh, wow. for the next one. Okay. And now you just mix it around. What are you doing, little puppy? <laughs> I want you all to see that he's wearing his doughboy pants. <laughs> no. And he's making dough. <laughs> it's my job to keep them informed. Okay, now I let the yeast uh, set for a minute, and um, then I get out three cups of flour, and I put it in the bowl uh, that I'm going to be using for the pizza. In. in the bowl here, put in about two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of salt, doesn't have to be exact measurements, and about one tablespoon of olive oil and we mix that around okay now that's all mixed up and we take our three cups of flour that we measured out and we just dump it right in we're gonna mix that around you see the big bowl we have but it's uh, perfect for, uh, for mixing this if you use a smaller one it's going to be a little more of a challenge scrape it up on the sides I know some people uh, do this on the counter and they roll it out and knead it. Um, um, I don't do that. What I do is, uh, it's sort of like my own little invention here. When I was a teenager, I worked in a pizzeria 
and um, we had a big dough machine and it had a dough hook. So what I try and do here is like simulate the, the dough hook. I have my fingers curved and uh, I go around in a big circle. I've seen that. I get what you're saying. Yeah. yeah, I've seen that before. I've seen that on TV when they make dough. Okay, now the dough's just a, a little too wet right now. So what I'm gonna do is take just a little bit of flour and pour that right on top. Now it's getting a very good consistency. I see it's going into a ball. Mm -hmm. That's exactly what you want. And you see the bottom, you can tell when it's done, when the bottom is just sticking to the pan and lifting off. Oh yeah, I see it is. That's mm -hmm. exactly what you want. If it's sticking too much, then you have to add a little um, flour. Mm -hmm. If it's not sticking at all, uh, then you, you might want to add just a, a little more water. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna mix it about maybe uh, another minute and then we'll be done. It's been about a good two minutes I've been doing this and uh, it gives you a bit of a workout. So now I'm gonna stop and uh, put it in the um, in the bowl to store. See how sticky it is? Mm-hmm, it's sticky. Yeah, let me get it cleaned off. Okay, we're gonna prepare the bowl. Just put a dab of olive oil in there. Mix it all around on the sides. <laughs> what I like to do is put a little flour on my hands. Scrape that out of the bowl. And now you take it and you start folding it underneath. And start making it into a ball. See how smooth it's getting? Mm -hmm. But underneath, there's still that hole there. So you don't want to get air pockets in, but you just want to keep folding and tucking. Once it's all smooth on top, you sort of close that hole and then you pinch in a circle. Go around and pinch, and you have your dough. Nice, you very smooth. Just sprinkle a little flour on top, and it's done. You want to store it in a metal bowl. Oh, okay, really? Um, and then you put this on top, Put it in the refrigerator overnight. You don't have to leave it out. Refrigerator overnight, and tomorrow at dinner time, when you get ready to make the pizza, you just take it out, and it should be doubled in size. Okay, excellent. Okay, it's uh, pizza night, and uh, we made the dough the night before. I just took it out of the refrigerator yet, but I could feel by the top that they rose very nicely. We'll show you what they look like in a few minutes, but we're all ready to go. Tonight we're going to make two pies. Uh, the first one, we're going to have a vegetarian pizza. We're going to have fresh spinach, tomato, green bell pepper, and red onion. The other one, it's called Chicken Savoy. When Crystal and I were up in Jersey visiting my uh, brother, we were at this restaurant, and he told me about this new uh, pizza they had, and uh, it was really interesting. What it consists of is fresh chicken breast that I, I just baked this. We're going to slice the chicken breast. We're going to add red bell pepper, portobello on, uh, mushroom, and a sweet Vidalia onion. And we're going to sprinkle some balsamic vinegar on it. Both Crystal and I like balsamic. We love pizza and the two combined uh, we were curious as you know how it would work, but all the ingredients together work really well and it's become one of our favorite pizzas. Mm -hmm. Over here, we're gonna, I'm going to make the sauce. Now, um, you could just go to the store and get, they have the jars or cans of ready-made pizza sauce. You could do that, but that's like um, at least double the price, sometimes triple the price, where if you just buy a can of crushed tomatoes with the thick puree, you could do that and then we'll just add some seasoning, some uh, sugar, salt, pepper, oregano, and then I have some fresh basil. Um, at Wegmans, I told you I'm just in love with Wegmans, it's my new favorite store. They sell basil as a plant. I mean, it doesn't get fresher than that. It stays well and you just pick off the leaves as you need them. So I'm gonna put that in and just make our sauce. To cook the pizza at home and get restaurant style quality pizza uh, you're going to need a baking dish like this now i got this in delaware when i was visiting my brother-in-law 
at a restaurant supply store and you can see how it has the holes in here it's black metal and it gets really hot and the good thing about that it actually simulates the um the brick oven pizza we're going to put cornmeal on the top and then we just have the standard pizza trays we're going to put them on once they're cooked okay i'm going to make the vegetarian pizza first so i'm just going to slice up the ingredients I'll cut the bell pepper and i'm going to slice this kind of thin and we'll cut up the red onion we're going to put on the whole onion on the pizza because we're just putting it on one pie and the onion we're going to want to cut kind of thin Our spinach we'll just chop some of this up fine and the tomatoes I like to use the serrated knife for that just cuts a little easier I'm gonna cut these in slices and lay the slices on top of the pie okay this is going to be pie number one and I will start with the ingredients for pie number two I'm gonna cut this pepper the same way we did the green bell pepper and we have the portobello mushroom on this one too we'll just use half the onion I want to cut this kind of on the thin side And the last part, we'll slice the chicken. And you just, what did you do to that? All I did is uh, bake it in the oven. I put a little olive oil and uh, salt and pepper on it. Oh, okay. And we cut it in bite-sized pieces. We'll do the, it's actually one breast that I sliced in two. Oh, okay. So you just took one chicken breast and sliced it in half and baked it with salt and pepper. Yep. And olive oil. Here's the ingredients for pizza number two. Okay, on the sauce, I'm going to use uh, it's 35 ounces of uh, crushed tomatoes again in the thick puree, which is good. And this will uh, be uh, for the two pies. We we could uh, get enough sauce out of this. Usually, the smaller cans will use one per pie. Um, now, one thing um, I do always before I open it on the on the um, can opener is I always wash the top of this very good. I don't know if you guys do that, but um, you never know what's lurking around. Okay, that's Jinx because Jinx <laughs> smells the chicken. Jinx loves chicken. She's a chicken hawk. All right, we'll put a tablespoon of sugar. Tablespoon of salt, <laughs> a little pepper, some oregano, and some of the fresh basil. Just break that up in there. How many leaves did you take? I think I took about four. Oh. And we'll put a little more on the uh, pie once it comes out too. mix that up and you can flavor this however you want you can even put a little garlic salt in here onion salt whatever you prefer and again doesn't have to be this could be the um, the ready-made pizza sauce I've used that before and it's really good uh, this is a very handy tool to uh, have the pizza slicer so when the pizza comes out you can readily cut it into how many pieces you want. Typically, they'll cut a large pie into eight pieces. Some do six and have really large slices, but uh, this is gonna be an important tool to have. Before we do the, uh, the dough, uh, we have some cornmeal, yellow cornmeal. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and just sprinkle it all over the top of the surface. 
And this is what we're going to lay the pizza on. It keeps the dough just a little off the pan, lets some air in there and let it bake nice. And it also, again, gives it that uh, restaurant style quality, that crispiness at the, uh, the bottom. We'll just take some regular flour and sprinkle it on our work surface area. That's where we're going to put the dough. Remember, this is the one we did yesterday. And boy, look how much it grows. And again, it wasn't sitting out at all. It was in the refrigerator the whole time, but it still rose this much. So you don't need to leave it out at room temperature for it to rise. So you just take it out and put it on there and press it down. And we'll sprinkle some flour on top. And we'll rub it around. All right, now we're ready to spread it out. First technique I like to do is just, you put your fingers here and you spread it out and turn at the same time. You see how bigger it's getting? Mm-hmm. Now in some of the pizzerias, what they do is they throw it from side to side. <laughs> and that actually makes it get bigger. You could also rest it on your top of your hands and start throwing it. And you've seen them do this, you know, where they <laughs> yeah, you throw it. It makes me nervous, but you throw it. Yeah. Now the key here is you want it to be evenly spaced the whole way out. You don't want to get any thin spots in it because when you cook it, it's going to break through and the sauce will leak through at the bottom. So I see the pan here, the size of that, and this is about the same size. So what I'm going to do is turn it over and now just lay it on. And you saw how easy we spread that out. And that's really due to the, um, the dough being in the refrigerator. It just, it's works so well when it's refrigerated like that, not at room temperature. So that's one advantage I feel to doing it the day before and letting it rise. All right, now we have the dough in the pan and we're ready for the sauce. Let's start with two ladles and you put that right in the middle and then you start in a circular motion and go out and spread. Just a little more. Okay. The next part is the cheese. And we have one pound of cheese, and we're going to put the whole one pound on. Ooh, lots of cheese. It's a lot of cheese. In a restaurant, this would be considered extra, extra cheese. Now, at this point, this is the basic pizza. If you just want pizza with nothing on it, this is how we would do it. And um, right here, we spent about $7 on all the ingredients, but it's a full pound of cheese. So if you put as much cheese on as the pizzerias do, it's like half a pound, um, it would cost about $5. So for $5, you have a whole pie. So it really is advantageous to make this at home because you save a lot of money. But also your insurance, ensuring the freshest ingredients possible because we handpicked all the ingredients we're going to put on top of this, which is nice. And uh, also, I think the best part of this is just the fun in doing it as a family. You know, when it's pizza night, the kids get excited. And at this point, we would have the kids come in and actually start putting stuff on top. When we have families that come over to visit us and they have kids and we make pizza, they line up right over here and they start putting their favorite toppings on the pizza and they just get so excited about it. So pizza and a movie. So um, it's really good to do uh, this kind of stuff at home. Okay, I'm gonna put some spinach on top. on the red onion. Once you have the basic pie done, you could be as inventive as you want. And now we'll put the tomatoes on. I 
I'm going to put just a little black pepper on it. You don't have to do this, but I kind of like it with just a little pepper on top. Oven I have preheated at 550. Very important. It needs to be really, really hot. And the chicken savoy ingredients, what I'm going to do is pour some balsamic on the chicken and let it marinate for about 5-10 minutes. All right, the pie's been in about four minutes, and what we want to do is turn it halfway around. Sometimes the oven has hot spots, and we'll put it back in. It's been about 10 minutes. Put that out. Ooh. Um, and just look underneath. Can you get this? You see how that's nice and cooked under there. Mm -hmm. That's Very what nice gives you that restaurant style quality that we were talking about mm -hmm. um, by cooking on the pan here. So we're just going to loosen up the sides. Okay, this is pizza number two. Uh, we took the first one out, now we're going to make the chicken savoy. So we take the sweet Vidalia onions and just sprinkle them across the whole pie. Uh, let's take the portobello mushrooms and we'll line them up. And the red bell peppers. And now we'll take the chicken and we'll sprinkle the chicken on top and I'm just going to break it up slightly while I put it over there. Okay, now on this one we're just going to sprinkle a little balsamic on the pizza. It's real nice with this and it's good if you could uh, let it cool down for just a little then the cheese doesn't run all the way through and we'll cut this in eight okay there we go Okay, and there it is. Homemade pizza. Dinner is served.